Yes, this morning I woke up with that song. Rhonda would know it. Probably shows my age a little bit, but it's way back. Whoops, someone did that echo there. Yeah. Way back in when Chris Harvey used to come to the Lands Council. Was it Lands Council? Yeah, that many times years ago. But it's you alone are worthy. I know Jane's looking at me because she wants me to sing. <laughs> we had a great time in that car, didn't we, Jane? Presence of the Lord, just you know, just in our conversations was great. But you alone are worthy. You alone are holy. You deserve the glory. Jesus, you alone. You know what? We all fail and we all stumble. I do. But you know what? Though a righteous man, and he's declared us righteous, Paul, he can rise seven times. And that's perfection, isn't it? Number seven. I'm very echoey, aren't I? Am I echoey? So this morning, as I bring the last part of the chapter of James, I want you to know that James is like the book of Proverbs. And I don't want you to feel like you're not measuring up to the mark because that's a bit how I felt when I was getting it ready, which was good. It's a good place to be because you can get on your knees and, you know, get before God. But I want you to know that the Holy Spirit will bring conviction, but the enemy will bring condemnation. And you've got to discern the difference between the two. Otherwise, you can get around of all men most miserable and feel like you can put a whole lot of stuff on yourself that you don't really... Should, shouldn't carry because Jesus has done it. So this morning as I go into this message, Father, I just thank you for your presence in this place. I thank you, Lord, that you're a faithful God, that you've redeemed us, and every one of your names you're true to. You are true, Lord God. You're a God who never lies. And Father, I thank you that when you say you've taken our sin and removed it as far as the east is from the west, it's done. And I thank you, Lord, if we sin, we can confess our sin and you are faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from the unrighteousness. Father, I thank you for that cleansing from the unrighteousness this morning. Lord, I thank you that each person, wherever they're at, will know that cleansing flow that comes from you. And Father, I thank you for that, Lord, because you know the word says that the tongue is the hardest thing. You can't tame it and you can't by yourself. In your own strength, you'll never tame your tongue. It always gets out of line. Who finds that? Oh, we all do. None of us are perfect. But you know what? I'm thinking now, it's, it, it says that you'll never tame it, but yet we're supposed to. Come on. But you know, it's only through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's only through his leading. And another thing I believe, if we spend more time in the word, we're going to be less likely to blow it. You know, we're going to be less likely to blow it. So this morning, I better get my slides up there, Lisa. You're not working? You got James there? We'll just wait a couple of minutes. We're having a good morning with the sound people, but we're not going to let anything rob us from getting what God wants to give us this morning, are we? We had an awesome time in worship. We had an awesome time in the worship. You know, sometimes it takes a bit of pushing through, but do that. It's good if you come prepared for the worship. It's good if you're already worshipping before you walk out the door. That's a good idea. Then when you come in here, you just join with everyone else and you just start to worship. There we are. We got it, have we? Yeah. So we're doing James chapter 1, verse 19 to 27. So I'll see if I can click this and it works. Click this and it works. Do I have to click, Lisa? I thought so. Yeah, it's got the green light on. Has. Got it? Okay, so you remember last week when Beth shared that she talked about counting it all joy. How easy has that been to do this week? <laughs> you know, it's not easy, but it's something that we do, isn't it, through every trial. So this morning you're going to hear qualities needed in trials, but they're also needed in every area of your life, whether you're having a good time or not. But, you know, there's a lot of people going through a lot of stuff and, um, yeah, we need, we need to be word-based and be led by the Holy Spirit and know that we're conquerors, amen? Because he's overcome. And is it going to work? What's going on with this? Something's doing. Okay. All right, I'm going to read you the scripture then. The first verse 19, it says, So then, my beloved brethren, 
Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. You know what wrath is, don't you? It's anger, okay? The different degrees of it. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Does not produce the righteousness of God. You know what? I've got the notes here, fortunately. I was really not going to put them in. I was really going to worry, just concentrate on the screen. But, you know, God's good. He goes before you, doesn't he? Up there now? Oh, okay, let's try again. <laughs> okay. We got that part. Yes, there's the scripture. Our anger almost always defends our own agenda. Our anger almost always defends our agenda. When something touches our buttons, that's when we get angry. You know, and we can think it's righteous anger, but half the time it's our button. You know, so it's not a good thing, is it? Because we're not really displaying the character of Christ. Anger should not control our actions or determine our words. But often it does. Often it does. And being self-centred and not other-centred is a problem. You know, if we're other-centred, it's not going to be about, hang on, how is this affecting me so much? Because we're thinking about us. Because in this world, it's all about me. Is that right? In this world, that's what people think, all about me. It's about me. I want to get ahead. I want to do this. I want to do that. All about me. But if we're other-centred and we think about a hard word, how that might affect that person that we're speaking to and how it could actually scar them for a long time, we'd be thinking about others. But we don't. We just vent it how we feel sometimes. And it's not a good thing because it does affect lives. And I know God can heal that, but, you know, there's scars left there. You know, and especially if we're doing it to someone out there, they don't know Jesus, where his representative. We don't want to scar people like that, do we? Okay, is it going to go now? No, it's gone too far. No, that's right, is it? No, it's missed one. Sorry, Lisa, I'll have to go back. Yeah, there we go. Now, Jesus is our perfect example, isn't he? He's our perfect example. And this scripture... I've probably shared this a lot, but this scripture is so important to remember this one and just get this into your spirit, man. But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, is it commendable before God? For to this you are called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps. So as a Christian, if you're living godly, uh -huh, you can expect persecution, but don't be afraid because he's overcome the world, hasn't he? He's got the victory, so we don't have to be afraid of that. But Jesus, who committed no sin, we all, we all missed that mark, but we have forgiveness. Nor was deceit found in his mouth, so no guile in there, no half-truth, who when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. Isn't that the key? Isn't that the key? Here's our example. Okay, let's go to the next one. James 1.21. It says, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. Therefore. Whenever you see it, therefore, as Derek Prince says, look what it's there for. Therefore, and it's because the wrath of God does not produce the righteousness of God. Does not produce it. So if we slip over into that flesh man, it's not going to produce the righteousness of God, is it? But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Who knows that scripture? If everything we did was based on seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness. So we think about seeking his kingdom, we forget about seeking his righteousness sometimes. But if we do that, and it says there, I'll go back to the word there, to, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. And as we know, meekness is not weakness, but teachable. And the definition for it is showing patience and humility. Gentle. So that's how we receive the word, the implanted word which 
comes right into our spirit man which is able to save your soul. Because whatever the situation, God, God's word saves. It'll save you from a lot of trouble. You know your soul, your will and your mind and your emotions, if they become godly, if they become governed by the word of God, because you've meditated on it, because you've got revelation of the word, because it's sunk deep into you and become who you are, so your mind is transformed, then when a situation comes, the word's there and the word saves. It saves now and it saves eternally because we're saved through the implanted word of God that came in, the seed of the word of God came into our lives. Okay, the next one. What is going on here? I think I went backwards. Be doers, not just hearers. So you hear this on Sunday, hear something on, on a Christian TV show, don't just be a listener in this situation. Be a listener when someone else is talking to you. But when God's talking to you, don't just be a listener, be a hearer. But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because you, that's what you'll come into a place. You'll come into a place of thinking, oh yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, I know, oh, I know the word. Yeah, I grew up with it. So I'm pretty good. True, that's it. But if you're not practicing it, you're missing the mark. That's how it is. Disciples do what their teacher does. You know, when there was in the ancient times when Jesus was around in that time, you know, teachers would rise up, rabbis, and they would have disciples who would follow them and copy them. That's what they did. They didn't just hang around and listen, they actually hang around and did. You know, Jesus sent the 12 out, didn't he, to do the same as what he was doing. See, they were doing the same thing. So that scripture says, teaching them to absorb all things that I have commanded you. So it's, it's observing and doing the things that God's told us to do, that you've heard, that he's spoken into your spirit. You know, it's like Matthew in uh, Matthew the, the house, you know, the man that built his house upon the sand. And he was like the man who heard the word and didn't do it. Well, guess what? Something came along and guess what? His house fell. We all know that story. We've all been probably somewhere around kids somewhere learning that house was built on the sand. And then you get to the religious leaders who they taught it and expected everyone to do it and didn't do it. So it's so important. Can everyone start to see how important it is to be a doer of the word? You know, do we fail sometimes? Yes, we do. But guess what? We can get back up and we can start again. His mercies are new every morning. Don't you love him? Who loves him? No, I do. Okay, now I'm going backwards. Go and look at this thing or you miss it. James 1, 23 to 24 are up to now. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of a man he is. Observing. Now, if anyone's into Hebrew, they can let us know what that word says. I'm not going to even have a try it. But in the, in the, in the um, Greek, rather, it means to behold, to consider, to discover, to perceive. You may be a Bible expert. You might have stored up a lot of information. You might have all that there, but you've got to, you know, you can observe his natural face, in the mood, but he observes himself, goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. God's word is a mirror, isn't it? He, it's the mirror. And as Derek said, it's reading you. If you're reading it, it's reading you. There are lots of distractions and things that can grab our attention. Lots of them, isn't there? In this day and age, you know, you've got Facebook, you've got whatever it is, you know. Things that are not necessarily bad. But you know what? The best thing to do is to listen to a message over and over and wait on God and see what he's saying to you because the enemy comes as soon as you hear it to snatch it away. That's what he wants to do. He'll try with me too. You know, he, it, he doesn't care who it is. He'll try and snatch, snatch it from you. James 1.25 But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, that one will be blessed in what he does. Looks into, I'm going to go into that again, looks into the Greek word there is to bend beside 
to lean over so as to peer within, to look into, to stoop down. You know, to me, that's, that, that, that's a place of humility. That's a place of your really, Lord, what are you saying to me in this word? To bring yourself to that place where you're just really looking into it. Can you see that? It's a bit different to observing, isn't it? It's a little bit different to that. And continues in it is to stay near, that is to remain, literally tarry, be permanent, persevere, abide. And that's the place. That's the place that we, we need to be. That's, a, that's where God's called us to be. So you not only do you look into it, you bend down and you do that, but you continue in it. And you're not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. And that what happens is you're blessed in what you do. So that when a situation comes up, you can handle it with God because he's already, you've already planted it in there and you're not taken by surprise. Who's been taken by surprise with things? Everyone. But you know what? We're coming to a new level. Amen. Ever upward. This is what we're called. We're going there. Yes. James 1.26. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Just told us, told us, it tells us in scripture that we, we can't bridle the tongue, but it says unless we do it. So it's something we can do, but we can do through the power of the Spirit and the Word of God. Amen. What does our work with God look like? What does it look like? Does it actually shine in the way we live and speak and treat others? Or is it just useless? Is it just something we do because we're just doing devotions in the morning and that's done? No one would ever be there. But it's true. Isn't it? It's true. Let's look at, the, let's look at our relationship with God and say, God, where do you want me to take me today? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you get the word of God down into your heart, it'll come out your mouth. Amen. And not only out of your mouth, it'll come out of your, of your character, it'll come out of, your, of everything you do, your actions, you know, it'll affect your whole person. And that's what we want. We want to be people who represent God. We want to be people who represent about, uh, ambassadors for Christ. James 1.27, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Who, know the, who knows that the world wants to spot you every time, doesn't it? It wants to, it wants to rob you. The, the, the enemy comes to rob, kill and destroy. And if he can do that in any measure, whatever it is, even if it's small, to stop you progressing to where God wants to take you, he'll do it. He'll do it. I can guarantee he'll have a go because that's how he does it. Your work with God will always show in simple, practical ways helping the needy. And that doesn't mean that, I, I look, I don't want you all to go out of here and rush around and take all your time helping the needy when you should be spending time with God. It's not that either. You know, be led by the Holy Spirit. Don't just go willy-nilly giving all your money away to someone because that mightn't be the thing to do. Maybe they need help in another way. Maybe they need help in budgeting or maybe something like that. You know, be led by the Holy Spirit. Don't just go silly. But we need to show in our lives by helping those people. And unspotted from the world. And I just, I thought about Lot. Lot lost everything and escaped as through fire. The Bible talks about people who will escape as through fire. And he did. He came out with, with not much, did he? And got himself in trouble. And you know, he was in that place. And the Bible says that his righteous soul was vexed, tortured, pain, toil in that place. It's not a good place to live. That's not a good, blessed place to live, is it? not a blessed place to live at all but yet he, the Lord said that we should if we do the things that he's called us to do we will experience that blessing does it mean we're going to have no problems or no trials? No of course they come and this scripture I just want to leave this one with you because this is challenging to me, I'm sure it's challenging to everybody because scripture can challenge you but it says finally all of you be of one mind having compassion for one another. Love as brothers, be tender-hearted, be courteous. Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. 
For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So, you know, maybe, you know, sometimes when you've done something and, you know, you, you try to come into God's presence and you just sort of can't get there. No one ever has that, do they? But, you know, like, that's what we, that can happen and we just turn to him. Just you come on your knees before him and say, Lord, I just fail miserably. Maybe it's an area that you struggle with all the time because I think we all have them. That's a shock, isn't it? But I think we do. There's some little things sometimes in our lives that plague us and it's like you just it's hard to get free in that area. I know it's possible because he's done it. But, you know, if you're still in that place, don't give up. Always come. Always come back to him. You know, like especially... Like people who are new Christians, you know, they sometimes they feel like they've failed and they can never do it anymore. But it's not that, because when we confess it, he forgives it and cleanses it. So, yeah. So, yeah, so that, let's do that this week. Because who wants to love life and see good days? Yeah. yeah, amen. We all want that. So that's finished the chapter one of James. Now, if anybody wants some prayer or anything like that, they're quite welcome to come forward and have prayer. But no one can do it for you. We can pray for you, but we can't do it for you. Everyone has their own walk with, with God. And I can't do it. I've got to walk mine. Amen? So that is, that is the end, unless anyone wants to get up. But just before everybody goes, I'll just tell you that the Tent of Hope Ministries is starting here on Thursday night at 7. Has anyone got a newsletter? I haven't got one in front of me. Thursday, I think it is, Tim said, didn't he? And it's going to actually be here. It's not going to be down there. It's going to be the ministry here. So, and that'll be really exciting. Please bring a friend along because you, you need to bring people in so they can hear the message and get touched by the power of God. Not that you can't take the power of God out there and the message out there, but there's something about the corporate anointing when they come in here, isn't there? Something a little bit different. The other thing tonight at 6 o'clock, very exciting, Stacy is sharing her testimony. I'm excited. That's excellent. So we're looking forward to that. Six, if you can make it, come along because no doubt you'll be encouraged. We're always encouraged when someone shares their testimony about their walk with God because it'll be different to yours. But maybe it'll inspire you. Maybe it'll make you realise that, wow, I can, I can go on too. I can do it too. So please come along to that. And there is morning tea down the end, down the hall, if anyone wants morning tea. But if anyone wants prayer, please come up.